God. I'm going to ignore her. We, um, welcome everyone and thank you for joining our event, Library Advocacy for the Win. Interview to Library Champion, Congressman Andy Levin. My name is Loida Garcia Figo, and I am a member of a CPDWL advisory group and a past president of the American Library Association. I am delighted to share with you my interview with the Congressman Andy Levin, who together with ALA and library advocates in the USA have secured hundreds of millions of dollars for libraries. This event is presented by IFLA Continuing Professional Development and Workplace Learning, CPDWL, and the IFLA Professional Special Interest Group, MPSIG. Uh, today, we are presenting the interview with Congressman Levin, and we have available experts on library advocacy from the American Library Association uh, to answer questions on the chat as we present the interview. At the end of the interview, we will have a time for questions and answers too. Each librarian is an advocate. We cannot wait, we cannot walk away. We need a seat at the table. We need to be present to impact public policy. And this is what leaders do. This is what we need to do to go deeper, forge a path and stay committed, library advocacy. And why should we advocate? Chances are that if we don't speak up for the library, no one else will. By being vocal about the library and services offered, we can gain attention of those who can help support the library. If policy makers don't know what the library is doing, they can't justify increasing budget for it or can justify closing it or cutting the budget. It can also dispel the myth that no one is using the library, that it is too quiet or full of books only. And chances are that those people have not visited a library in a long time and don't know what it offers. So we must position librarians as leaders and we must work with politicians and elected officials. We must use multiple online and in-person platforms to advocate for libraries and to grow advocacy leaders. Funding, broadband equity, and fair use of copyrighted material are more important than ever as libraries continue to serve their communities and need rapidly changing circumstances. As we know, IFLA and library associations around the world have strengthened efforts to advocate for libraries at the United Nations, WIPO, the World uh, Intellectual uh, Property Forum, and many others. Additionally, national library associations and local libraries advocate to secure funding, buildings, equipment, and librarian positions to better serve communities. And today we will hear from Congressman uh, Levy about this support for libraries and how he believes librarians can get politicians to join our cause to advocate for libraries. It is very important that we know and believe that every librarian and every library worker can be an advocate and that together working with library associations, organizations with the same goals and library advocacy group, we are stronger. And I want to just share some examples of successful advocacy from ALA together with library advocates, which includes uh, coalitions with organizations and support from groups of library advocates individuals across the USA. 
For instance, uh, there is a, cor a coronavirus aid, relief, and economic security CARES Act uh, that included 50 million for national grants and funding to state libraries distributed through the Institute of Museum of Library Services for COVID-19 response and digital inclusion. Uh, and there is the Consolidated Appropriations Act, uh, 43.45 billion for broadband deployment, including libraries and other institutions. And then the third example is the American Rescue Act plan. Uh, Act, uh, the acronym is ARPA, and that was uh, 7.17 billion for the Emergency Connectivity Fund uh, through the um, FCC for loaning hotspots, devices, and providing internet access to patrons' homes. And um, that was wonderful, right? Uh, it's, there's so much more that's been uh, secured through this uh, great collaboration with um, politicians, a congressman and the living, and library advocacy groups together with the American Library Association. And now, um, Without further ado, I would like to uh, present the interview. It's a series of questions and answers a conversation, and we'll present them one after the other. During these, please feel free to ask questions on the chat because this is your chance. This is your opportunity to um, also speak to experts and library advocates. Levin, uh, thank you for taking time to talk with us today. Congressman Levin sees, serves the people of the ninth district of the state of Michigan as a member of the United States House of Representatives. This interview is part of a webinar series from two units of the International Federation of Library Associations CPDWL and MPSIG. You are a library champion and we need more library champions in all regions of the world. As a past president of the American Library Association, I can say that ALA certainly appreciates your support for America's libraries, especially over the past couple of years at the outset of the pandemic in March 2020, you rallied your colleagues in Congress to include 50 million in emergency relief funding for libraries. And later you introduced the Library Stabilization Fund Act and the Build America's Libraries Act. Thanks in part to your support, libraries secured 200 million in the American Rescue Plan Act in 2021. Throughout your career, you focus on issues that people care about. So how did you, uh, how libraries become such a legislative priority for you? Well, um, first of all, thanks for so much for inviting me, Lloyd, and it's great to be with you. Um, I mean, libraries have been super important to me my whole life. Uh, when I grew up in Berkeley, Michigan, in my, in my district, uh, my mom used to walk us up to the Berkeley Public Library. Uh, it was at the end of our block. Then you turn right on Coolidge and you had to cross the big street. And there it was. And, you know, my parents had a lot of rules uh, for us, but... When we, went to the, when we went to the library, we could take out as many books as we could carry home. And uh, we, I don't know if we went every week or what, but it was a real ritual. And, uh, you know, so I just see libraries as an actual absolute fount of our democracy. Um, the idea of the, of the free exchange of ideas, of books being available to everyone and other now many other forms of, of educational media and materials, I just think is so important. And, you know, I'm the father of four. And so in my own life as a parent, libraries have been just essential to the upbringing of my kids. And my wife, Mary, is very much like my mom. Uh, we 
Um, we need to stop. You know, we, Sorry. I, our, our home is full of library books at all times. And and then, you know, a lot of a, a spark for my ad, advocacy happened, happened during the pandemic when we were trying to find ways to scale up resources for constituents and libraries came to mind as such a, you know, a way to do it. So that's that's part of the background. Thank you. That's um, very encouraging for, for librarians as well. Uh, several bills in Congress to support libraries. And one of them was the Build America's Libraries Act. And what was the goal of that bill? And could you share a little bit about the process, how we moved from the good idea stage to introduction in Congress? Absolutely. So I introduced uh, Build America's Library Act in March of 2021, I think, with Senator Reed uh, from Rhode Island, who partners with me a lot on libraries. And it includes a $5 billion investment in library infrastructure projects all across the U.S. through the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Priority would go to libraries that demonstrate the greatest need and predominantly serve communities that are underserved or marginalized, including families with income below the poverty line. And priority could also be given to projects proposing to enhance facility safety, high-speed uh, broadband access, accessibility for folks with disabilities, or uh, to make uh, libraries more energy efficient. And the idea came from talking to my local libraries and with the America, American Library Association about what libraries needed. And it was clear that so many library buildings were out of date all across the country since the last major investment in library infrastructure really was many decades ago. And the average library building today is now more than 40 years old. And from fiscal year 2009 to 2019, library capital expenditures were $1.5 billion less than in the decade before adjusted for inflation. So it really, um, you know, that's, that's the goal of the bill to really tackle that problem. And um, it's, it was really uh, the process of getting it introduced was really a dialogue and a collaboration with librarians in my district and in Rhode Island and all across the country. Great teamwork. Amazing. Uh, a good relationship with librarians, as you've just said, uh, mm -hmm. and in your district. One of the ALA board members, Larry Neal, is in your district and hosted you online for a virtual tour of his library during the pandemic. Why did you take time for that virtual event? An elected official so busy took time for libraries and what value did you experience, that experience had for you? <laughs> well, that's, Larry Neal has just been an incredible partner to me and my team and I really feel honored to represent him. And meeting with community leaders and constituents has just always been a major priority for me. I mean, the whole point of legislating in a democracy is taking the issues that face the communities I represent and finding creative solutions to them. And I just don't feel like you can fulfill your, your constitutional responsibilities as a congressperson if you're not really listening and engaging with the people that you rep represent. And taking the time to virtually tour the library was really important to me. It was an example of library buildings in every community, um, what they could have if they had the resources to do it. So it really, it made me recommit to fight for the Building America, to, for, to, for Build America's Libraries Act all over again. And I think I try to, I try to take meetings that um, both educate me about what constituents need and that help everybody see the larger picture. And I thought that was one that, that was, uh, you know, really helped show the needs uh, and, and what could be done with investment. And then I was happy to participate in the opening of the library this past year in person and welcome community members to the new public space. It's a beautiful new library in a growing community. 
That's wonderful. I hope librarians around the world are taking note. Virtual library tours are important as well. Other ways that you engage with your constituents. I'm pretty active on social media and I remember something about a Twitter chat with ALA. <laughs> yes, well, gosh, I engage with my constituents through uh, in-person events, uh, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, hopefully a lot more, uh, like round tables, town halls and coffee hours. And I certainly engage with my constituents online since my, so many of us are, are there now. Um, and I do it in many ways. I, and I, I also engage with them through newsletters. And we did an incredible newsletter in the summer of 2020 with resources about all the libraries in my district. So that was a, a highlight. And then in terms of social media, I remember my Twitter conversation with the ALA talking about the various bills I lead on libraries. And I just think that you need to reach people wherever they are and in whatever media they're using. And so whether, uh, you know, it's, it's Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or an email newsletter or a, ma a snail mail newsletter, um, I think it's important to, to use to, to, to find people where they are, where they are in the way they're comfortable communicating, I guess. Thank you for sharing that um, because yes, definitely online has, is here to stay and also uh, in person. So we can definitely know that uh, elected officials are there in both uh, hybrid modes. Our list come from libraries all around the world and libraries wherever they are must be able to leverage that visibility into legislative and funding success how can we do that what can we say to appeal to politicians well you know i mean Lloyd, the importance of libraries just can't be overstated you know, overstated. Uh, libraries are an essential pillar of democracy itself. Democracy only thrives when information is free and people can seek out answers and knowledge without censorship and without discrimination. And I think this is incredibly important when we think about the role of libraries worldwide as a global society and also in recognizing our history. So we know what happens when people seek to take that freedom away. We need only look to some of the most extreme examples like the banning of and burning of books that, um, th th you know, in any way threaten the lies spread by the Third Reich and other historical regimes. And we're even seeing uh, efforts to ban books now in different places in America and uh, of course other parts of the world. So, I just feel like libraries are an essential institution in fighting against such extremism. Their very presence counters book bans. And so there, it's all, it's important in our country as well as around the world. And they help te teach so many people information literacy, how to determine fact from fiction and fight against misinformation. Currently, when whatever you read on the internet feels like it rules all, it's incredibly important that folks have those skills. So libraries are essential in building citizens and citizenship. So I, I guess what I'm saying is tell this story to politicians, get them into the library, show them firsthand why libraries are so essential to your communities, wherever you are and to what you do for your patrons and bust the myths of, about libraries that most, many people elected officials included would have, which is just, oh, well, a library is just about books, which is very important. But when you get them in there, show them how, and I'm using several examples later, they don't all apply to every library, every library, but show them how you're involved in telehealth. Show them how you're involved in adult literacy classes, or show them how you're involved in teaching people 
like English as a second language or whatever the case may be around the world. Show them how you're involved in job training and helping people prepare resumes. All the different things that libraries are doing. Show them how you help kids do homework or have access to uh, to the internet during the pandemic when they may not have had access at home. So I think we need to expand people's minds about the role of libraries because you play such a broad role in the 21st century. But, you know, any way you can reach out to elected officials is good. The number one way certainly is to get them into the library. And video, 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 use social media, take pictures of the visit. And, um, you know, I, I think you can really influence people. Libraries need to be above the fray. Libraries need to be not political, not partisan. They're just essential to democracy. So it's not about any particular party or ideology. It's about the freedom of everybody to learn and choose their own ideas and their own ideologies. So that's my thought, Lloyda. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, right. Telling the story using different media um, and keeping that, you know, staying in communication with the uh, elected officials. Thank you so much um, for your time and your wisdom, uh, Representative Levin. Uh, librarians from all over the world appreciate your support for libraries and championing libraries. And I am very sure they appreciate these words and this um, advice coming from an elected official that is an actual champion for libraries. So thank you so much. It's an honor to partner with you and all your colleagues, Lloyda. Thank you for what you all do every day. Thanks a lot. Take care. Well, and there you have it. Um, this was a very unique opportunity for uh, me to interview uh, Congressman Andy Levin that has done so much for libraries. Now we have a time for questions and answers. And we have Shonda Hines here and Kevin Maher. They're both from the American Library Association to answer questions related to advocacy. And advocacy can uh, vary um, maybe strategies around the world and from country to country. So um, while you get your um, questions ready, and please do have questions because this is the time we have. Um, I, I do have some questions for um, uh, Shonda or Kevin, um, either of them. And I want them to expand a little bit on the strategies. Um, Congressman and I talked about uh, uh, there are some strategies that include texting or emailing letters, inviting the congressman and elected officials to the library. Uh, can you expand a little bit more on that type of strategies, please, for librarians anywhere in the world? Uh, yes, hi, this is uh, Kevin Maher, happy to be with you all today. Um, yeah, I think he touched on a couple of, you know, very helpful uh, points. Um, social media is, is a very important, increasingly important tool for members to, uh, for members to use. Members of Congress, uh, House and Senate and, and state legislatures are tracking their mentions. Um, you know, you just need to mention a member of Congress or, you know, elected official a few times before you really get on their radar. It's like, oh, there's, there's a lot of stuff happening at this library. We should be uh, on top of that and know what's happening there. Um, you know, thanking them. Um, you know, members of Congress, you know, they, they get criticized them all the time, but, you know, people forget sometimes to thank them, thank them for visiting the library, thank them for signing a letter, thank them for um, supporting funding in the, the you know, whatever level of, of uh, policy that they're they're working on that that goes a long way, and they they do remember that. Uh, I was a former Hill staffer, and I remember the the times that people did thank us for for our our support and our work on, on there. I mean, you sort of become immune to the constant criticism, but you know, thanking thanking people and praising them and is is always very helpful. But you know, inviting members to you know visit the, visit your library. We've got you know particularly tying it to 
policies that they might be following if they're um, you know on the armed services committee talk about you know show off some of the work you're doing with veterans maybe have a veteran there can talk about how they were able to um, you know build their resume after they left the military and, and transition to civilian life uh, you know tie the tie the to what their interests are and what committees they're on or policies that they're talking about and how you know libraries are serving the various uh various needs Thank you, Kevin. That's uh, great. Um, it, it, it really underscores the importance of uh, reaching out constantly and sharing the story. Um, I also have another question for um, you, either of you from the American Library Association. Um, does the uh, strategies, do they vary if we are advocating for, for academic libraries, because we need to advocate for all types of libraries, or uh, public libraries. Can you, uh, either of you, provide some insight into that? Because we have librarians from academic libraries, public libraries, school libraries, uh, and we know there might be some um, kind of like different strategies, perhaps. Yeah, I think that was, you know, that was really evident during the, the pandemic. So, you know, people understood, you know, the local public library might be closed, but they're providing curbside services or still finding ways to provide services. But, you know, school librarians were working with teachers in, in the school and helping them transition to virtual education. And they were, you know, one of the things people might not have thought about is like dealing with this, uh, issues like uh, copyright and, and fair use of, of material is something that librarians deal with every day and classroom teachers might not have, have thought about those issues. And so librarians were able to work uh, you know, work with the, the administration and the classroom teachers about that. And, and um, the, there are a lot of things, you know, that, that was a good example. Academic librarians are dealing with, a, you know, a, you know, different, the, everyone's dealing with, with different issues and, you know, particularly around education, higher education and K-12 education, that there are, you know, librarians are a part of those discussions. And, you know, if, if um, local or, or federal legislatures are talking about, you know, reauthorizing Higher Education Act, they, you know, librarians should be a part of that discussion and talk about, um, you know, programs that they, um, you know, that, that they provide and that they support um, the, you know, the vers university or the, the, the college setting. So, um, uh, yeah, so y yes, the, the, issue, the issues are different and, and they're, all, they're all important and they, you know, should find ways to to insert yourself into those discussions and you know, provide thank examples. You. Yes, thank you so much. And, um, and as the attendees uh, that have joined us today and those that will uh, synchronize, you know, tune in uh, the recording in the future, uh, um, our understanding, these are, uh, this is advocacy for libraries and uh, library associations are involved in this and library, um, advocacy groups and individuals as well. So this is a huge coalition, so to speak, that is needed to uh, get these things done. Um, I just got a direct question here uh, um, to my actually fun, and uh, it has to do with the very interesting um, and kind of new strategy of virtual library tours. And, um, and people are, um, they are uh, asking if uh, they are really effective. The congressman said so, but uh, maybe Kevin has some more insights. Uh, I know people are very uh, interested in the actual physical experience, right? And, you know, in person, people are walking into the building and looking at things. But during the pandemic, the virtual environment became very important, as the, uh, again, the congressman um, mentioned. Uh, but I wonder if you as experts can say something else to our uh, attendees. Mm -hmm. Hi there, Lloyd. This is Shonda Hines here, a deputy director of communications at ALA's public policy and advocacy office and welcome everyone this morning. Uh, I would just echo what the Congressman said that there is nothing like getting people to see the work you're doing rather than telling them. I don't know about you, but um, I used to be a teacher abroad in, in Turkey. And um, one of the ways that we taught uh, was by showing people rather than telling them what to do. And that's exactly what you're doing when you're inviting someone into your library. And that could be a public library or it could be a school or academic library. Um, and, you know, to just build upon what Kevin said a moment ago, 
um, find out who is a decision maker when it comes to your library and the programs that make a difference for you. Uh, every country is different in its um, legislative structure, but the key is to find the ones who uh, make a particular difference for your library and then cultivate relationships with them. Um, the thing with uh, Re Representative Levin is that uh, the librarian in his district, uh, Larry Neal, had a relationship with him before he asked him for funding, before he asked for his support. So um, one way to do that is by inviting your legislators into your libraries. Uh, fortunately, now um, it's a lot easier to get there physically than it was uh, once. Um, however, a virtual a visit is definitely welcome in the United States. I know members of Congress relish the opportunity, um, well, really to have a photo hop with babies and kids at libraries, but also to, to show um, the impact that they are making by standing up for these services for their constituents. Uh, so I would, I would definitely say that there's nothing like showing your members of Congress what you're doing and appealing to the issues that they care about as well. Thank you so much, uh, Shonda. And thank you everyone for joining our webinar today. Um, as we can see from the interviews and from the um, this uh, uh, question and answer section, uh, we can impact public policies and world organizations and national as well. Um, and I also know this because I worked on this for a long time. So we can mobilize and make allies uh, to bring change. Uh, change takes commitment, courage, and effort, but it also takes collaboration. And the voice of one person, a president, a leader, could be strong, but the voices of many people working together make them heroes, right? We need more uh, library heroes and librarians. You are the ones that we need and that we have been waiting for. Um, librarians are the ultimate heroes. So together we can achieve great things. Thank you so much for joining our event today. The link to the recording will be shared on ASLA Communications channel very soon. So uh, stay strong and, and let's continue advocating for libraries.